Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top 20 most played cards in EDH. I didn't put them in any order because it kind of depends on what colors you're in. But if you can play these colors, you play these cards. So we will start with Boros Signet, which is pay played in one in every three decks that can play it. Makes sense. Mana generation is very good in artifacts. A surprising one is Supreme Verdict. This card is played in 32% of all decks that can play it, which is insane. Uh, think about that for a moment. Supreme Verdict. Uh, it came out as a surprise to me. People are buying out copies of this as I speak. I don't know. I've always liked the card. Very, very strong in EDHs. And since mana is not really a problem in terms of the double white and blue, this is strictly better than Wrath of God or Day of Judgment. Just cannot be countered. All right, moving on to probably the most popular single color, green. Secure Tribe Elder. Now, this has a promo edition, which is a great speculation. It is played in 32% of 83,000 decks. Being monocolored means that it's it's just in more decks, right? Because it's any deck with green instead of a green and black or a green white or some type of combination. Right now, it is 59 cents. It is a uncommon. The next card would be the Signet. Uh, this one is the blue black one, the mirror, and is played in 32% of 44,000 plus decks. I know these signets were recently reprinted, and but they're just such good trade bait because they're so necessary for casual players. All of these cards I'm going to show you today, all 20 of them, are meant for casual EDH players. Like There's not anything particularly expensive here. Supreme Verdict is a rare, but uh, even that is not out there. Anyway, artifacts are very good because they can be played in mini decks. Lightning Greaves, which recently got a reprint, is played in 31% of pretty much every deck. So out of the 177,928 decks that can play it, 31% of it play Lightning Greaves. Now the mono white cards, the mono green cards, the mono single color cards tend to be more popular because they're easier to slide in and they can slide in more decks. So Sun Titan which is only $4, kind of a good buy right now, if I do say so myself, because I think casual players like it. I'm casual myself, and I look at it, and I say, huh, it's very strong. And also can combo. Uh, so 31% of 81,000 plus decks play this $4 card. Overall, just a fantastic card. It's a good body, too. Like That's something that is underrated. Is It's a 6-6, six -six, right? Now... Yeah, you're going to go ahead and grab a ton of... What you, I've seen people grab the most is artifacts that generate even more mana to do more insane stuff. So that makes sense to me. Phyrexian Arena, out of the 90,000 plus decks that play black, 31% of them will play Phyrexian Arena. Makes sense. It is also a $5 card. Mostly thanks to reprints. Uh, if we didn't have reprints of these cards, these cards would be insanely expensive. Which is, of course, after having taken a list, uh, taking a look at this list, they did a great job hitting all these cards. Sometimes multiple times in the same year uh, in terms of reprints. So next, uh, I don't need to say much about this one, Path to Exile. The other card is on this as well, Swords to Plowshare. But out of the 81,000 decks that are white or have white in it, 31% play Path. Out of the 90,000 decks that have black, 31% play Phyrexian Arena. And this kind of gives you a good concept of what you should be building towards. Not that like you have to have these cards, but these cards slide in so well in the majority of decks that want those colors, right? Card draw, removal... Here's one that I did not see. Uh, Pitrify is played in 34% of all Golgari decks, which is 41,000 of them. Destroy target artifact or creature, it can't be regenerated. 
Yeah, I did not see this one. It is instant speed and it's very affordable at 25 cents. And that's what you have to love about EDH is just having a fancy deck or having more money does not necessarily mean you can win. Uh, in fact, many times it means people will gang up against you and beat you. Because that's what my EDH... So my EDH group, we have two scenarios. One, everyone's just mana ramping into a combo. Or two, we are just aggroing each other. And if someone presents a too big of a... Uh, they're, they're doing too well, then you have to kill them. Next, we have another Signet. These Signets are just so popular. Foil Signets are good. Regular Signets are good. I just have a... I just know that they're very liquid. So although it's only 25 cents, I'm sure someone will trade for it. Next, out of 70%, 78% of all decks, all 177,000 blah, 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 blah of them, Soul Ring is played. Soul Ring, in my opinion, is better than the Moxes. Uh, if you look at the Moxes and you look at these diamonds, right? Let's take a look at the diamonds or what it would cost. It costs about two for a diamond. A diamond comes in play tapped. It costs free for the Warren Stone Power Stone, which produced, which is the Soul Ring equivalent that comes in play tapped to produce two colorless. Moxes are really, really good, but I think Soul Ring is slightly better uh, because it produces two colorless, and it, it it's break even. Like the Moxes are better turn one, but after that. Man, the soul ring gets you. It gets you going so fast. It's just incredibly powerful as an artifact. And then Psychonic Rift, which has seen a reprint, is played in fifty-two percent of the blue decks. So Psychonic Rift definitely one to keep your eyes on. Sword to Plowshare, forty-eight percent of all decks. So a much higher ratio than even Path to Exile, because if you had to choose one of them, I don't know why you want to play both, but let's assume that you had to play one, you would always pick the Swords over the Path. Now, Eternal Witness, surprise, this is a surprising number, which makes a lot of sense now why it's still so pricey. This card has been reprinted to Oblivion and back, but it's still five bucks, and it's played in 44% of the green decks. Um, very interesting to see such a high number, but it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. It is one of the better cards in EDH. And overall, these cards have been reprinted a ton, and that's why the price is the reason the price is. If they were not reprinted, I can only, uh, <laughs> it would be awful, right? These cards should not ever be over $10. I don't think these should ever be over ten dollars, to be quite honest. All right, counterspell. Out of the blue decks, thirty-nine percent play it and cultivate. Out of the green decks, or thirty-eight percent play. It. It's going to say thirty-nine, but it's thirty-eight. So counterspell is one. It's classic. Hey, I'm going to deny you from playing your fun spell, and I got a little bit of fun from that. And Cultivate Mana is classic mana ramp. Now, Cultivate the promo is very good. It's very expensive. Counterspell, the Invocation, that's interesting to me on many accounts. Because Invocations are relatively cheap. Now, I haven't checked up Counterspell. I, I imagine it's already spiked. If it didn't spike, it's a great buy. Because, again, if 39% of all blue decks are playing Counterspell... Then, and then there's this really pimp promo, which is ch cheap and on sale or really discounted. It's interesting. The Cultivate f and promo, I can tell you that was like 25 cents one day. And then now it's like $5 and people want it. And I have lots of copies of it. And then it's like, oh, good. It happened. Finally. Uh, next, Kodama's Reach, 36% of all green decks. And the Is It Signet, 35%. One um, thing that I'm going to go ahead and note really quickly is good cards are good. I don't know how else to say it. Um, if you do not play any of these 20 cards, I have no idea what you're playing. Like, it does not make sense to me. These signets are going to be very good. The 
Kodama's Reads, The Cultivate is going to be good. So if they ever made promos of these or invocations or masterpieces, just given the amount of people who want are playing the card and may want an upgrade, it's worth looking into really hard. Like the Counterspell Invocation is quite interesting. Even if it did spike recently, which I believe it did, it's interesting. Um, just given the fact that people want it. Uh, or want the original version of it and are playing so much of it. So if you ever were to see a promo, like this would be the greatest thing if they had FNM promos and these were the FNM promos and they knew they were valuable. Now, Rakdos Signet is also a Signet, but I'm going to end with Demonic Tutor and you might be like, oh, why do you end with Demonic Tutor? Because it's the only card in the top 20 over $10. Uh, most of the cards aren't even five. Most of them aren't even a dollar. Um, this one needs a reprint. I'm fairly certain this is not on the reserve list because I'm looking at a reprint version right now. The Monitude needs a reprint. Uh, I don't think any card in the top 20 should be that expensive. And $32 is too much. Maybe I think this 32 is probably the uh, Lily artwork. I cannot imagine a regular one being 32 Probably a regular one, I assume, is... 20 but even that's too expensive i think they should reprint it in the commander deck uh, keep commander cheap keep it affordable and keep it fun um, i would rather have more people play commander than sit on a pile of demonic tutors which i'm sitting on a pile of demonic tutors uh, i have a lot of them and i just have a lot of them, them because i have bulk it's really funny to think it was like uh, anyway i'm not going to go into that bye guys